tournament. My name is Alex Nguyen. I'm joined by Jonathan Ramirez and Brandon Wu. Today, our game will be Alpha Blue versus Burnaby Central. I'm so hyped for this game. Are you guys hyped, Jonathan? Yeah, I'm pretty hyped, man. Brandon Wu, are you hyped? Uh, yeah, I would say I am hyped. Um, I uh, shoutcasted an Alpha game the uh, other day, and they played exceptionally well, and I can't wait to see another great game from them. Yes. However, I also cannot wait for Burnaby Central. You know, I, I really think this will just be an exciting game. Um, yeah. And we're getting now into the uh, the bands. Alex, you want to talk a little bit about this? Uh, yeah. So uh, the first band coming out, Gangplank Band. Uh, really, really strong late game, uh, but fairly weak early game. They do ban the... Oh, it looks like they ban the Rengar as well. Uh, targeting that top and uh, jungle side. Uh, meanwhile, on the opposite side, banning out that Kaisa. Also a fairly strong AD carry in the meta right now, along with Zaya and Caitlyn. I, I do like that they are banning out AKM Lunar, one of the stronger points of Alpha Blue. Mm -hmm, exactly what I was going to say. Kaisa being one of his uh, most uh, well-played uh, champions uh, throughout his time in the solo queue, and I, I do believe it will transition well into these games, especially Nautilus. with the uh, love. Yep, the Nautilus. Uh, another great ban going in. Um, Nautilus just a really fat hook. Uh, He's gonna be able to get a lot of picks, and with Kaisa blowing up with her Q, it it would have been lethal damage. Yeah. What do you think about that uh, Malphite ban coming out? Uh, Malphite, uh, they they did nerf his AP ratios. However, mm -hmm. he still is a strong just tank in general. If you do build tank, he's got a lot of map pressure. He's got a lot of pressure in the mid game when he has those ultimate that could blow up anyone. And we see the Zaya ban coming out again against AKM Lunar. Mm -hmm. And yeah. did those Malphite uh, reworks go out yet? I believe uh, that's next patch that the AP ratio actually gets decreased. Ooh, I think you are right. But so currently the... in this meta, uh, as we are playing this game, Malphite is still OP. Mm -hmm. And at least pick coming out now uh, for Alpha Blue. Most yeah. likely going to be in the jungle role, but maybe we'll see some quirky <laughs> stuff and they'll flex pick it top lane or something. Yeah, Lise, um, really good in the early game. She uh, has her uh, stun from the cocoon. She's able to tower dive exceptionally well with her repel, and um, it, it should be a really great pick. Let's see what I Want Onion decides to go with here. He's got three seconds left on the pick timer. Looks like Ooh. the Kale, very good late game scaling, and then the Kane mm -hmm. coming out directly afterwards. Mm -hmm. And I do like the Lise pick coming from Alpha Blue. Uh, AP junglers, very popular right now. Uh, with an AP jungler, you can run double ADs, mid and top. Also, with the, uh, as Brandon mentioned earlier, dive potential, I really want to see them focusing that Kale either in the mid lane or the top lane, trying to push her back as far as possible before she does hit her stride. The Jace comes out as well from Alpha Blue. Yeah, yeah so I Jace think it's pretty strong. The top side, I do think, will be um, where a lot of the action will be happening. Jace, uh, he has the blow potential with the uh, QW. Again, at least when they're going to be tower diving, sieging the top lane, Kayla's not going to be able to do much in this early game. Ooh, and the Syndra, band, or Syndra pick coming out from Burnaby Central. A fairly uh, safe mid laner, to say. Uh, and now we begin second band phase. Yeah, I just want to say... I just oh, want to say on the uh, red side, there is going to be... It is it looks like it will be a scaling game. Kale, as we all know, um, level, I believe, like 611, 16. Um, she gets her power-ups to her auto-attacks. And then Syndra, her passive, um, increasing... Or giving buffs to her abilities once they are uh, fully leveled up. Mm -hmm. And I do like the Jace pick coming out. Uh, very, a really good lane bully. Uh, if they, if he were to follow the Kale, uh, it'd be very hard lane for the Kale. And the Jace would most likely get ahead in that lane, along with Elise help as well for the dives. Metal and we do see... coming out. Mm -hmm. Let's see who the last ban is here for Burnaby Central. Possibly another ADC ban. Yeah. And I do like that they are focusing AKM Lunar. Uh, but not only that, uh, Alpha Blue has decided to save his pick for uh, one of the last two. They don't want to reveal what he's playing yet. Yeah, they will want me going for the uh, the counter pick there. Um, we see Orion as that last ban. We don't see a mid laner, possibly, maybe Jace mid, but most likely he will be top lane. So an Orianna is a good choice. And we see the Braum coming out. Uh, very helpful in those 
late game team fights, able to create so much space and peel for his. Oh, and it looks like Caitlyn locked in for Burnaby Central. And we'll see what AKM Lunar rebuts with. Yeah, we see the uh, top two ADCs. They are already banned out from the side of Burnaby Central. So this Caitlyn picking up as uh, arguably the third best ADC in the current meta right now. It is going to be a really good pick. Let's see what Lunar picks in response to it. Yep. Zoe, possibly. Yes. Zoe, pretty long range here to combat that Syndra. High bursts of damage throughout the entire game, but we'll see if she can land these sleepy trouble bubbles to secure these kills for the team. And now Callista, the last pick, possibly, or Ash. Both solid ADCs now, Callista. Receiving buffs the next patch. I uh, heard word from some outside sources that the patch indeed did actually come out mm -hmm. and that uh, Malphite's AP ratios are reduced. So, Ooh. yeah, we see Misfortune not coming out, though. Mm -hmm. yeah. I do like the uh, the Misfortune pick, actually, a lot with the Elise and the uh, Leona. They were able to uh, stun the enemy team down. Misfortune able to possibly get a good ult off, and it would be good a lot of damage in team fight, especially. Mm -hmm. Oh, Burnaby Central... Uh, answers with the Taric actually uh, going to hopefully be able to survive most of the team fight and let Kale do a lot of the burst damage that she can do. I'm really looking forward to this late game or looking forward to this late game by Burnaby Central right here. Yeah, exciting game is about to come up. I can already feel it. I can already feel the tension building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I really do. I like both drafts from these teams actually. They they seem to be running quite different styles and i will see how they clash on the rift mm -hmm. yep so we have more of a late game scaling survivability comp from burnaby central meanwhile on the alpha blue it looks like they're going to be focusing the early game into the jace with the elise the leona misfortune or yeah leona misfortune bot lane able to create so much pressure and in the mid game they are a team to be feared and a lot of dive potential as well on the alpha blue side of that leona and jace and zoe both being able to land some pretty good stuns. Or, I mean, sorry, Elise and Zoe able to land some pretty good stuns with the Jace jumping in as well. Yeah. Maybe we'll see some um, power dives early on. Before we go into an intermission, um, Alex, what do you, what, what, which matchup are you most excited for this game? Most excited? I really want to see the top lane Kale prevail. Mm -hmm. I want to see Kane go, go up there, help him out with the Jace. Uh, I want to see them try to stop this Jace from snowballing too hard as he does have a lot of early advantages uh, in the early game. And uh, Jonathan, what about you? I'm actually personally excited about the Tark to see how he utilizes his ult and shields to actually negate a lot of the damage that could put out against his ADC. Tark, if played well, can actually be quite a nuisance throughout the entire game. Mm -hmm. uh, me personally, I am, I am also excited for the uh, top lane matchup, uh, both top and jungle. Um, Kale. Uh, it will be the melee versus uh, ranged matchup, so it will be a little difficult. This will force uh, Kane to come top, and Elise probably will also respond with the same way, wanting to get those ganks off. Yeah. So and, uh, I think we can probably just go into intermission now. Yeah. See you, we'll see you guys in a minute and 40 seconds.
Welcome back from intermission. We are now live with Alpha Blue versus Burnaby Central here. Looking to get started in the game. Mm -hmm. okay. And let's see how these early game plays go out for the minion spawn. Possibly we will see an invade. Looks like they are actually yeah, looks... walking topside. Welcome yeah, looks like uh, the blue team all going top right now. We just have the one KO to protect the top side. Everyone else in that uh, east jungle. Ooh. Actually, looks like they're going for a uh, early game invade here on the red side. Oh, Kale walking Ooh, out. Cut. She did not want that. any of that. Not at all. Not too much going on here. Scaring away that Kale. Retreats to her tower here. And uh, now Burnaby Central looking to state their ground here in the uh, bottom side jungle. Mm -hmm. It's Spotted actually interesting. We see the uh, kleptomancy on uh, Misfortune. I actually have not seen that yet, so I'm, I'm pretty excited to see uh, how that will turn out. Yeah, to piggyback your point, I'd also like to point out Kale's uh, keystone going for mm -hmm. yeah. the meteor instead of uh, the usual kleptomancy. We'll or see even how... lethal tempo. Yeah, lethal tempo as well. We'll see. It. We'll just have to wait and see how that turns out to work in her favor or not. Mm -hmm. Gives her a pretty good early game poke though with that Q plus the Arcane Comet. But later in the game, maybe she'll want that extra attack speed possibly, but we'll see how it plays out. Mm -hmm. And I do, I would rather like to see a Kleptomancy on the Kale. It does help her, you know, accelerate uh, her her game. She gets uh, a lot more gold and she might get the potion that gives her an extra level as well. But. Uh, the Meteor, definitely an interesting choice. Has a lot of poke in the early game, as you said. Yep. And we do see uh, both junglers. They uh, started their respective uh, blue buff. And it looks like Kane, you know, continuing on that top side after clearing wolves. He will be trying to go for that uh, level 3 gank, I would assume. Top lane, trying to help establish a lead for the Kale. She will have struggles. And uh, at least possibly going then to the bot lane. Try to get Lunar ahead. We can see all lanes just kind of scrapping it out. Mid lane, especially with Syndra and Zoe exchanging some pretty good blows, but nothing too. Oh, Leona actually dashing in here with that level two, but Targ and Caitlyn both have it, but a force to walk away here. Gets Ignite down, burned, but uh, no kill coming down the bot lane, actually. Yeah, we do see Caitlyn now has no heal. They are going to want to stay back. Elise is on her red buff right now. And if they do push up, this would be an easy gank with no heal. She still has the flash, however. And Leona looks like she is going to engage, but they are too close under tower for them to commit too much. Takes a lot of damage, actually, from that Kale. Oh. And I, I do like the different styles these junglers are playing. The Kane opting to help out the top side of the map as they do have that Kale. They want to get her ahead. And meanwhile, Elise in the bot side trying to get Lunar ahead as he is one of the strongest players on this roster right now. They might look for a dive here, in fact. And pause is actually coming out, and it's paused now, so I had want to mention that they have sizable minion wave here in the bot lane for them to make this dive happen, so let's yeah, see looks... what's going on. Caitlyn does actually still have flash, though, to maybe escape a cocoon or a Leona Zenith blade. And it looks right. like the jungler did DC for a little bit right there, but the Elise is now back, and the game will resume shortly. And if we do want right. to no. keep our eyes on the uh, the bot lane, it looks like there will be a, a gank happening. Yeah, and so the minion wave is about to crash into the tower here, and Elise is walking up, looking to land the cocoon here. Flashes forward, lands a cocoon on the Targ. Teleport is coming in here. Targ stunned up with Elise taking a lot of damage. Actually goes down. Targ flashing away. Leona returning the flash onto the Caitlyn, picking up the kill, and now Targ is looking to come help his Kale that has TP'd bot lane, taking a little bit of damage, but not looking like she'll be able to go down here. Kale as well retreating to the bot lane. Misfortune looking like she wants more, actually land getting landed on by the stun here, taking a lot of damage, forced to flash. Kale returns the flash here, killing Misfortune and now chasing the Leona who has no mana and nothing to escape. It looks like she will actually be going down here. Double kill for the Kale for I Want Onion. Burnaby Central really turning that around. Uh, it looked like it was going to be an easy double kill in the bot lane for the uh, Alpha Blue, however, we do see the TP coming in from the Kale. Um, Elise wanting to take one more tower shot before re repelling back up. However, she did get stunned by the Tarek, and it was really unfortunate, which caused her death there. And yeah, yeah, it, it as Brandon said, it was in favor of uh, Alpha Blue right there. However, uh, 
a little mistake at the bot side as uh, as Tarek was about to die, he did level up. Walking up. Oh, yeah, looks like there's a little bit of action. However, nothing's gonna happen as she is spotted out by Ward and Jason backs up. However, as I did say, Tarek did live with a sliver of health. He did level up during that little altercation under the tower and uh, it, it ends up uh, in favor of Burnaby Central. Yeah, and you can see the confidence actually coming from that misfortune. She thought that she had a lot more support from the Leona when she walked back uh, through that tower, uh, causing her to actually take too much damage there and getting stunned up by that Tarek. Mm -hmm. Maybe underestimating the uh, range of the uh, Dazzling Gleam. Yeah. <laughs> and Kale now with the 600 gold advantage against the top laner. Um, this is really what we wanted to see with the Kale again, that early um, lead, hoping to then push it further. You know, we did see the TP. We're probably going to be seeing more TPs like that later on into the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we saw Kale, you know, TP help try to help out that bottom lane. We didn't see Jace follow with the TP, however, he did shove the tower, uh, but he wasn't able to get any tower plates out of it, so it wasn't too advantageous for the Jace to not teleport right there. Mm -hmm. You can see Scraps going up in the top lane here. Both top laners wanting to get as much CS as they can, but that Kale does have that lead, but currently not level 6, not have those ranged autos. Jace still able to make a pretty good laning advantage yeah however with that vampiric scepter she's uh, a lot more sustainable in lane even without uh you know very much she does have that heal she does have the corrupting potion she's gonna be able to stay up there uh for longer than usual you can see the pressure that's being applied here on the bot lane from the leona misfortune they're being forced under their tower here but we can see it up maybe we'll lose pretty here with it, and now uh, you can see them walk. walk. Now, and I just want to say, to um, oh. you go, Brandon. All righty, um, just saying, like, it's we are now almost seven minutes in the game. We do see a 20 for uh, the misfortune over the cave. Uh, nice little poke coming in from the mid lane there again to electrocute. Oh, and she flashes forward, forces a flash out of sin reaction time here from the Syndra dodging from the Zoe attack, which is then buffed from her spell cast. And Elise actually looking to land a cocoon, actually lands under tower. Spiderling comes out, and actually the auto attack is what picks up the kill on, on good from the... Yep, and a <laughs> beautiful boy. Uh, knowing her damage, able to... Cinder does dodge some of the damage. However, Elise was in the top side there, uh, and was able to look... Oh. Like the crash in the bot lane. Like blade actually going in on the Caitlyn, stunning her up, taking a lot of damage, especially from that aftershock and Q, but not enough to actually take her down, but takes a lot of her health. And now you can see Kale with those ranged autos finally returning a good amount of damage here at this Jace. Leona possibly looking for even more, actually Zenith Blade lands once again on her. Dazzling Gleam comes out to stun up a little bit of the damage, but Miss Fortune's ult is online and takes out the Caitlyn easily. Yeah, and as we see that, Leona, pressure, just able to zone away the Caitlyn from getting CS, and every time she walks up, she's getting punished by that Leona. And we can see that through the CS lead, as mentioned earlier by Brandon, in the bot side of the map. And it's only going to be going, um, there will be more of the uh, deficit later and later into this game. We now see it, um, it's increasing even more, and there's a huge wave in the bot lane that will be missed from the Caitlyn. Yeah, and just really good play here coming from the Leona, capitalizing on every move she actually makes. Every time she's walking up, she's getting hit with that Zenith Blade, getting stunned up. They're getting a lot of damage from Misfortune. We do see the Misfortune uh, uh, really ahead of that, Caitlyn. Uh, a couple of items, off, or a couple of gold off of completing her Essence Reaver. Meanwhile, Caitlyn only has a BF sword at the moment. And uh, looking at the bot lane again with the Leona, um, she actually does pick up the uh, sweepers this early in the game, even without having the upgraded support item yet. Really going for that vision denial, and I do feel like they will be trying to go for more of the ganks again with the Elise. With the higher levels, it should be easier to pick up those. And you can see this little river skirmish here. Tarek actually caught out immensely here, gets landed by the bubble, and several stuns coming out from Leona and Elise. Nothing he could have really done there. And now it looks like Cloud Drake is going to be attempted to be taken by Alpha Blue. 
Yeah, it's really dangerous to be walking by yourself against a team um, coming from Alpha Blue. You know, they do have, if they are able to land one CC off on it, they are able to land two more at least. Cadre coming out now for Alpha Blue, capitalizing on that Tark being caught out. And I want to point out, look at those control wards in the inventory of all the players of Alpha Blue. They really have the vision on lockdown in this game. You see Kale actually walking up to do a lot of damage here. Arcane Comet with that little extra burst of damage, forcing Jace to flash. Having those ranged auto is going to help a lot. And now it looks like she's going to be able to get a plate for herself, plus 160. Cocoon actually going out with a Spiderling on the cane to maybe try and protect that control ward, but it's most likely canes at this point. And I would like to point out that for Kale, this is just the best case scenario. She went down bot lane, she got two kills. She's ahead in the lane. This Jace isn't able to really do anything to her. She's got her range of auto attack. She's got her ultimate. She's going to be surviving, and she's going to be scaling. Yeah, and she hasn't even backed yet. Still with that Vamp Scepter. Actually, targling up with the Dazzling Gleam to get up here. Misfortune on the retreat, though, with that King coming in for a game. Flashing coming in, forcing the flash on the Misfortune. Actually returns with an ult, taking a lot of damage. Leona forcing the King to stand inside of the stun, and now flashing forward, landing the stun on Caitlyn, who will most likely go down with the Tark here, at least returning with the counter gank. Great engage here, and now you can see Zoe chasing after Syndra, but getting pushed away here. Actually, Elise walking up with that air drink, and Mumas, he flashes forward with the Spiderlings, and actually picks up the kill against Syndra. And that was a beautiful turnaround for Alpha Blue right there. Able to turn, oh, looks like a teleport coming out from Kale. I don't think this is what she wants to do. She might get caught right here. Her ult is Dying. online. She does pop the ult here. Repel comes out from the Elise who is running away from tower damage. Stunned up here. Actually, all teams of Alpha Blue taking a lot of turret damage and Kale is not going down yet. The bot lane is here to return this fight, but it looks like they'll be able to blast come away to safety. Mm -hmm. Very close fight there though. Kale actually able to protect, er, to protect the tower here in the bot lane from going down. And as I said earlier, it was looking in favor of Burnaby Central. However, the, the bot side of Lunar and Solar uh, able to just turn that around, uh, wait for the Lilies to get there, and turn that into a 3 for 0. Yeah, with Kale gone from the top lane, though, it does give uh, a little bit of breathing room for the Jace. He will be taking plays. He will be taking some more minions, trying to deny more CS against the Kale. However, she is a bit ahead, though, so with the kills and CS lead. You can see a Gunblade picked up from her already. And Jace is one of those champions where after two, one or two items, he gets that power spike, able to burst down a lot of champions. I want to see after he gets this Dust Blade or Yomu's Ghost Blade, I want to see him maybe make some moves around the map with his teleport, with his increased movement speed with the Drake, and look for some plays around And here. Elise walking up here, out of vision currently, I believe Protobelt comes in, Sleepy Trouble Bubble does land on the Syndra. First, the damage comes out from Zoe, and it looks like she'll be going down. And now Jay's actually returning a fight with the Kale. Possibly wanting more, gets gunbladed with the slow. Now Kale looking to return a few autos, and actually one more auto will do it. Looks like Jace actually goes down to the Kale in the top lane, making her 3-0. Yeah, exactly what I was saying. If you land one piece of CC on it, oh. It looks like actually Leona looking to ult in here at Tark. Kind of caught out here, forced to flash away. Misfortune returning with the ult damage here. Will it be enough? Heal comes out to save the Tark's life. And now mid turret is under pressure here. Yeah. Yeah, we do see both flashes gone from the uh, bot laners, though, on the red team, as well as the heal from Caitlyn. And now we see that both teleports are down for Burnaby Central. I want to see Alpha Blue make another play right here with the Jace teleport. Maybe bait a 4v4 and turn it into a 4v5. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they really have to capitalize on this Kale here because she is the last leg for their team. It looks like the bot lane not doing too good. But I can see a comeback coming very soon if they capitalize on this Kale's power right now. And we do see the lane swap going in. Possible team fight. Actually, Kale under fire here. Zoe and Leona both in her lane here looking to stun her up. She's pretty caught out and out of position here. Looking to get a lethal kill on the Misfortune, but she runs to safety. And now Kane, who is looking to come bring support to his top laner, is also looking... Oh, actually! Dives under the tower to kill the Misfortune, but... We'll go down. 
turns that into a two for one instead of a two for zero. Yeah, that was definitely misplay on Zoe's part there. Yeah, I was about to point that out. Zoe bringing, just delivering the cane straight over to Luna right there, and it cost him his life. However, we do see them get started on the Rift Hero on the top side. And we'll see if Burnaby Central can answer with a dragon. However, they are very unconfident, uh, not confident in themselves as there is barely any vision in the bot side at River. It looks like Alpha Blue will have no trouble taking out this Rift Herald here. And we do see Jace finishing his Dusk Blade. We'll see if he can maybe challenge uh, any uh, champions in the 1v1 as he is pretty strong right now, has that lethality build. You see Elise constant pressure here applied from mid lane. Actually walking up here, looking to land the Cocoon. This Fortune doing a lot of damage. Of course, it's the Flash out of Syndrome, but will it be enough? It looks like she will actually go down Miss Fortune's ult. And what I've been noticing in these fights is that Miss Fortune's ult is just absolutely shredding the enemy team. And Alpha Blue might collapse on them right here. And now Leona walking, trying to walk up. Zonia's Hourglass actually coming out with the Leona returning the stun here. Invulnerability coming from the Targ ultimate with Leona cut out. Elise going down here. And a Leona in the Dragon Pit with a skirmish. Jade actually coming in from the back line to screen the kill on the Caitlyn. And now Misfortune is free to walk up here. Flash forward from Leona stuns up the Kale. She goes down. The Targ is the last one alive here. Running away to his bot side tower. It looks like an easy push mid here for Alpha yeah. Blue. And although we, they were not able to grab that dragon, they turned that to a four for zero for them, or a four for one for them, and they're able to just push down mid tower. Oh, and massive damage coming from the Zoe there on the Syndra. Yeah, and that was some beautiful micro play uh, from Alpha Blue right there. And we'll see if they can push any more advantages as uh, they do just reset right there as a team, being able to pick up a lot of items. Yeah, we see um, the vision. We see three control wards in the top river from the uh, blue team. They really want to try to secure this um, dragon up within the next four minutes. Maybe they will try to go for an early one. And I do just want to compliment this Elise. She has been doing an exceptional job with how Elise should be played. You know, constantly ganking. She does have the repel. She is able to tower dive. Or, excuse me, she has the cocoon. And she's able to tower dive with her repel. So, just great job on her part. Misfortune up here in the top lane applying pressure. Leona actually looking. Xenith Blade, wild throw there from her, but still able to take down this tower here. And now Jace is actually... Looking to return some poke here with the Burnaby Central bot lane. We'll be contesting that blue buff. And as Brandon mentioned earlier with the control wards, they are slowly choking Burnaby Central uh, with their vision just out in the top side right here. And I want to see them make plays from the Fog of War. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jace's uh, TP is down, however, he is staying in the bot side. He, he will try to take the tower, but he will not be able to support his team if there is an all-out fight in the top lane. Yeah, and their, uh, Burnaby Central's team is really strong in the late game, actually. Uh, Alpha Blue has done a fantastic job uh, accelerating the game, taking these small skirmishes before Burnaby Central is able to really get their items and get really strong. However, when... Oh, and Kale actually going in here on the Misfort... Nothing actually comes out of that yet, but you can see the burst potential coming out from the Kale. Yep, in the bot lane, they're just taking the tower. However, as I said earlier, when that level 16 hits on the Kale and the Syndra, they're going to be a force to be reckoned with, as long along with the Caitlyn when she gets her crit item as well. We're gonna see if Alpha Blue can maybe end this game before they do get their power spikes. Otherwise, it's gonna be very hard in those team fights to really bring down everyone on Burnaby Central. Exactly. We do see another reset now. Tarek uh, clearing the vision from the top side. However, there's just so many wards there. I don't think he will be able to get them all. Mm -hmm. Now it looks like red team looking to play a lot more defensively here. Yeah, and I do respect that decision from them. They they want to turtle until they can catch up in gold, 
or at least in items, so they can maybe rival Alpha Blue's uh, incredible lead right now. And not many objectives for Alpha Blue to take right now other than towers, so they will just be running it down these lanes trying to get damage on the towers. Maybe looking for a pick, however it can be very hard as Burnaby Central, as you said earlier, was playing very defensively. Yeah, we're now 20 minutes in the game, a uh, almost 7k gold lead for the side of Alpha Blue over Burnaby Central. Um, still, it could be anyone's game though, all they do need is one team fight. They're gonna try to drag this out for the late game that Kale is. Mm -hmm. You can see Kane here They're looking to actually flash this forward here on the Misfortune. Zenith Blade returning, actually bringing Caitlyn, or Misfortune alone here with the Kale. Ult comes out to reduce the damage on him. And now you can see a teleport coming in from the Burnaby bot lane. Leona actually taking a lot of damage here, but still looking to stun up the Kale. It looks like it's not enough actually now at the least. Walking up here on the Kane, who is looking for the final kill. And now finally, the Syndra's ult secures a kill on the Misfortune. And now we see Jace on the chase here with Hart. Running away here from the Jace, securing kill. But now Caitlyn actually walking up here on this J a lot of damage knocked away, but Caitlyn actually returning equals the amount. But here is Kale to help with the damage. Two flashes come out. And Jace looks like he's actually able to escape. That acceleration gate coming in clutch for the Jace there, able to get up, pulling out two flashes from Caitlyn and the uh, Kale. Um, the big thing to notice there in that top lane fight with the Leon is the Zenith Blade. It will go to the target, the last target that it hit. So it doesn't matter if it goes through two targets, it will go to the person in the back. So I do think that, that was a bit of a misplay. If he, if the uh, Zenith Blade was landed onto the Kane, it would have been able to protect the misfortune there. And we might have seen a different fight there. Yeah, and we do see Syndra picking up that uh, bounty. Oh, Tarek might be caught out here. Uh, oh, Tarek, it's alright if you miss the cocoon. <laughs> There's just so much CC going in from the blue team. Yeah, and it looks like the Infernal Drake will be going out to the Alpha Blue. And sorry about that uh, lack of casting there. I'm actually trying to fix a little stream delay that has been going on. <laughs> yeah. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, Sindra actually got that gold bounty of 450 gold from the shutdown of Lunar and was able to pick up her Luden. She's going to be looking pretty strong uh, with her completed item. Once she hits level 16, however, her, her abilities will be doing massive damage. Kane might be looking to get... Nope, just backs off right there. And there are pings to the top side. They might look to... Uh, siege this tower or use Lunar as bait and catch out someone rotating to the tower up here. Yeah, I just want to say a great job, uh, Misfortune this time around. Um, with the early leads from the CS, and they have just slowly been pushing that, we do see the 60 CS lead above her lane opponent. Uh, three kills up. We, she's actually the highest leveled member on her team, even though constantly being next to that Leona. Yep, and I feel like we've shown so much attention to the top. And oh. Yeah, oh, top and like bot the... item of this map. Oh, Cocoon actually landing on the Targ here, returns to the Dazzling. Oh. Disengages that very cleanly. And now it looks like top lane is getting a lot of pressure applied to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> as I said earlier, however, the <laughs> while the skirmishes were coming about, uh, we've paid a lot of attention to the top and bot side of the map. However, I'd like to give uh, the Zoe uh, a lot of credit. She was able to shut down this Syndra, so she wasn't able to roam around the map too much to help with her team, and able was able to, you know, keep herself in the lane and wait for her team to get ahead. And now she is 3-0, and has a lot of gold ahead of the Syndra. We see Vision getting cleared out here from Burnaby Central, and Miss Fortune is looking to return a li little, but. Currently, Burnaby Central is actually doing a great job playing that defensive game, looking to scale up with that Kale. Mm -hmm. And we do see the Baron is up. Uh, Alpha Blue might look to start it or perhaps bait out a fight right now. And it looks like oh, they are starting, starting it. Yeah, they do have that Infernal Drink. They will be doing, uh, I believe, 10% additional damage for, with that first dragon. Yeah, and it's like. Burnaby Central won't be able to answer this Baron. Now this will be uncontested. Jason applying good pressure in the mid lane. 
It doesn't look like they're gonna even want to risk fighting this because one fight could cost them the game at this point or a lot of power and inhibitor damage. Yeah, we do and see another reset. Um, I'd, I'm predicting that they will maybe just run it down mid, get the inhib, rotate bot, possibly get that. We do see the uh, there is another wave pushing in that bot lane. MF actually staying around on that bot side. Yeah, at this point in the game, I don't think she's going to want to 1v1 that kill at all. So she might have to play this pretty safe. You can see Burnaby Central actually looking to capitalize on this misfortune who's pushed up pretty far into the lane. Yeah, she sees the uh, members of the red team, but she still stays there by herself. She is very confident with what she can do right now. And actually, Kale looking, and now a ult comes out from Kale. Going in here, actually at least going into the back line, bursting that kill down after the ult has expired. And now we can see the cane caught out here in the middle of four alpha blue team members. And we see that vision control that alpha blue has in this bottom side of the jungle. They, you know, uh, oh, Zoe flashing forward, oh. burst sound that Syndra immediately, and now ult coming out. Oh, Kit walking back into the last two ticks of that ult and taking lethal damage. She yeah, goes down I think too. She would have been there dead anyways. We did see the Zenith Blade right to the left of it, so no matter where she walked, she was going to be getting hit by something and would have died. And it looks like Tarek flashing forward, seeing to do something to protect his team from losing, but it looks like it's too much. Alpha Blue, too strong in these team fights here. Kale flashing forward, looking to return some damage, but. Nexus and the is a... all exploded. And uh, yeah, GG to uh, both teams. Yep. And Alpha Blue really, really playing that series out or that game out really well. Able to uh, slow down the game on the side of Burnaby Central and get a lot of micro advantages throughout the game, so that they had the gold lead. They had. The most lead, mostly except for the early game when the Kale did teleport to the bot side. Uh, but you see that the rest, damage graph. yeah, that damage graph for the misfortune actually huge damage on for her team, even out damaging that Kale who is such a high late game scaling champion, emitting a lot of damage. Yeah, and what I would like to point out is that Syndra and Kale they did not manage to get it to level 16. They didn't manage to get level 16, their power spikes, and mm -hmm. the game ended as Alpha Blue uh, pushed on those advantages that they had gained throughout the mid mid game. Yeah, Alpha Blue playing a little slow towards that mid game, but I think the something clicked and they decided that it was now or never because Kale was about to scale up to level 16 and do a lot more damage, and they did not want that. Mm -hmm. That. Yeah, I just wanna I wanna give the credit over to Elise. Um, with that early game pressure, you know, the constantly ganking, the uh, cocoon, the uh, repels for the tower dives. It was it was just great playing by the green macaroon. Yeah, and it looks like that will be all for today. Thank you for joining the MVSS Esports uh, League of Legends broadcast. We will catch you next time on the Rift. This has been Alex Nguyen, Brandon Wu, and Jonathan Ramirez. Peace. Have out. a good night.